Hey folks, uh, Mr. MathBlog here. This is lesson 7-1 and that's titled Ratios, Rates, Tables, and Graphs. Okay, this stands for California Common Core. So there's our Common Core strand for our teachers. And so our question here is how can we represent real world problems that involve ratios and rates with tables and graphs? Okay, we're going to do all of that here. So here's our first activity. So uh, students in Mr. Item's class uh, classes are doing an experiment that require 250 milliliters of distilled water for every 5 milliliters of pneumonia. So the table shows the amount of distilled water needed for the various amounts of pneumonia right there, okay? All right, so uh, let's use uh, the numbers in the first column right here. So here's our first column right here. They told us um, we need 250 milliliters of distilled water for 5 uh, milliliters of pneumonia. So they give us this information, so we're going to use this information to write a ratio for, now we've got to watch out the order, it says distilled water to pneumonia. So distilled water goes on top, so 100 goes on top and 200 goes on bottom. So just be careful of the wording right there, okay? All right. So if you wanted to put 2 over 100, that would be the ratio of pneumonia to distilled water. But we're going to do uh, water to pneumonia right there, which is 100 over 2 right there, okay? So how much distilled water is used for 1 milliliter of pneumonia? Well, if this is 2 right there, if we cut it in half, that'll tell us it's going to be 50. So we'll use that answer to write a ratio for distilled water to pneumonia, okay? And this is going to be like a, a unit ratio. So it's 50 milliliters, and that would be reduced to 50 over 1. See how we divide it by 2 divided by 2? Okay, so we need for, for each 1 milliliter of uh, pneumonia, we need 50 milliliters of, of water right there. So are the ratios in A and B equivalent or not equivalent? Is 100 over 2 equivalent to 50 over 1? Yeah, they're equivalent right there. So how can we use our answer in B? right here to find the amount of distilled water to add to any given amount. Well, for every one milliliter of pneumonia, we need 50 milliliters of water. So by just multiplying by 50, that'll tell us uh, how much we need for the ammonia right there. So let's go ahead and complete the table. And uh, what are the equivalent ratios that are shown in the table? Okay, well, we know it reduces to 50 over 1, which is 100 over 2. So look, this is 50 times 2. This is 1 times 2. So 1 times 3, and then so 50 times 3, that would be 150 right there. Remember, the amounts of distilled water is 50 times the amount of pneumonia. So if we multiply 50 times 3, that gives us this one right here. So 50 times 3.5. Now watch this trick, you guys. 3.5 is the same as 3 plus 0.5. So 3 times 50 is 150, and then 0.5 times 50 means half of 50, which is 25, and add them together and you get 175. Okay, and then um, uh, for this one here, since that, so when they give us um, uh, the amount of pneumonia, we multiply by 50 to get this, but when they give us the amount of water, we're going to divide by 50. So 200 divided by 50 is 4 right there, and then that one's given right there. I'm at school and they're doing construction, so you hear some bangs and pops and some saws and everything, so that's the noise you're hearing in the background. So, so look for a pattern. For every one milliliter of pneumonia, there are 50 milliliters of distilled water, so that means for six milliliters, we just multiply six times 50. Well, six times five is 30, so six times 50 means we'll need 300 milliliters of distilled water, okay? All right, so now we're gonna graph these guys. So we're gonna use the information as the, and the table as ordered pairs, okay? So typically, you guys, when you're given a table, this top row is your X coordinates and this bottom row is your y coordinates remember ordered pairs are in alphabetical order X comes before Y in the alphabet so since this one comes before this one this is typically your X values and this is typically your Y values okay all right so here this is this is going to be 2 comma 100 that's what goes right here at 2 comma 100 okay this one is going to be 3 comma 150 okay and then we're going to graph these right there and then of course 3.5 175 and then 4 comma 200 and then 5 comma 250. Okay, so now we're going to graph those ordered pairs. And because we can have fractions and decimals of distilled water and pneumonia, then we're going to go ahead and connect those up, uh, connect the points up to get fractions, and then we're going to describe the graph. Okay, so let's graph 2 comma 100 down here. Okay, this is always the horizontal is your x-axis. It's always the first numbers right here. So this says 2 comma 100. We're going to go over 2 up 100. So there's 2 comma 100 100 right there okay 
over 3 up 150. So there's 3 right there. 150 would be between 100 and 200, so right there. Okay, this one over 3.5 up 175. Here's 3, here's 4, so 3.5 right there. And then 175, well here's 150 right there. Here's 200, so 175 will be right about there, okay? And then uh, 4, 200 and 5, 250 are right there, okay? And then it says, uh, connect those points. All right, so describe that. Well, it makes a nice straight line. In fact, these will always give us straight lines as long as these are equivalent. And in this lesson, they should be equivalent ratios right there. And it'll give us a nice straight line. And we can use that straight line to make some nice predictions, okay? So for each ordered pair that we graph, write the ratio of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate. Coordinate. Okay, this says y coordinate to x coordinate. So y's go on top, x's go on bottom. So 100 over 2, 150 over 3, 175 over 3.5, and so on. So there's those guys right there. And so the ratio of distilled water to pneumonia is still, well, all of these reduced to 50 over 1. So how are the ratios in C related to 50 over 1? These are all 50 over 1, so they're equivalent to 50 over 1 right there. And they make nice straight lines when their rates are equivalent right there. Okay, all right, so here's the graph of pneumonia and distilled water right here. So the point 2.5, here's 2, here's 3, so 2.5 is right here, and 125, that point is on the graph, but it wasn't in the table. So the ratio of the y to the x, okay, so here's y to x, so 125 over 2.5. How is that related to the ratios in C and D? Well, since it's on that line, it's going to be, what do you think, that E word is going to be equivalent. Okay, so that means 2.5 milliliters of pneumonia, 2.5 milliliters of pneumonia requires 125 milliliters of distilled water right there. So what do you think is true for every point on the graph? Well, the Y coordinate is the correct amount of water. So here's the correct amount of water right here or the amount of pneumonia given on the X coordinate right there, okay? So whatever the X is, we can use the graph to figure out the Y. So how can we use the graph to find the amount of distilled water to use for 4.5 milliliters of pneumonia? Okay, well check this out, you guys. So if we go over to 4.5 on pneumonia right here and go straight up to where it intersects the graph right there, it intersects it right there and goes straight over, it'll tell us how much water we need. So that's what graphs are good for. We can uh, interpret how much water we need right there. So go over 4.5 and it goes right to there and it gives us uh, it's between 200 and 250, so 225 milliliters of water is what we'll need right there. All right, so we can use tables and graphs to represent uh, problems that involve equivalent rates. Well, we've already done that, but here's another one here. Shaggy and Scooby, I like Shaggy and Scooby, and they're traveling at a constant speed and go 120 miles in, uh, miles in two hours. So we're going to make a table to show the distance they traveled at various amounts of time. So first, we need to write a ratio of the distance uh, to time to find the rate. Okay. Okay, so distance to time, that's what it says. Distance goes on top, time goes on bottom. Distance to time is 120 to 2. Let's get our unit rate. Let's make this 1. So we'll divide them both by 2, and we get 60 to 1, or 60 miles per hour right there. Okay, so that's our magic number to help us build this table right here. So for one mile, they go 60 miles. Uh, I'm sorry, for one hour is 60 miles. For two hours is 120 hours. For three, let's just slide that up. You might not be able to see that down there. So there it is right there. So here we go. We're just going to keep adding 60. So plus 60 plus 60. Or we can do 60 times 3. 60 times 4. 6 times 4 is 224, so 240. 60 times 5 is 300 right there. Okay, so now we're going to graph that table. Remember, um, uh, write them as ordered pairs. This is typically our x's, so our time is our x coordinate, and our distance is going to be our y coordinate. So 1, 60, 2, 120, 3, 180, and so on right there. So there they are right there. Okay, so now we're going to graph those ordered pairs, and since we can have fractions and decimals, that represents the times and the distances that Scooby and Shaggy travel. So we'll connect those points and hopefully it'll give us a nice straight line. And it should because these are all equivalent ratios. Okay, so let's graph them. 1, 60. So down here is time. That's our x-axis. So we'll go over 1 up to 60 right there. Okay, there's 1, 60. Okay, over 2 up to 120. Now this is the one that they gave us, so I think I'd 
did this with a black dot right there because that was the one they gave us right there over three up 180 and then the rest of those points and then connect them up right there okay now we can use that graph to find out how long Shaggy and Scooby uh, take to travel 90 minutes okay 90 minutes is time so that's an hour so 90 minutes how many hours is 90 minutes that's an hour and a half because 120 minutes is two hours this is 60 minutes this is 120 minutes so there's 90 minutes an hour and a half or 1.5 so we'll go here go over to 1.5 go up onto the line right there and then we go over here and it'll tell us how far they traveled right there. So then go over to the y-axis and that tells us that at that point right there at uh, 1.5 comma 90, that tells us that they traveled 90 miles in an hour and a half or 90 miles in 90 minutes right there. All right, you guys, I hope that made sense and take care.